Thanks for the kind words. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be part of this very prestigious meeting. Thanks to Team Diabetes India, Dr. Bansi, Manoj, very close friend, like a brother, and BI team for this opportunity. What I am going to do is uh, talk about what are the current standards for CKD care in type 2, what is a standard practice today, and what the learnings we had from EMPA kidney study. Yeah. So, Today we know what is CKD. CKD is when there is an abnormality of kidney structure or function which is present at least for three months with implications for health. At least for three months means someone who gets an AKI as a result of sepsis in the hospital as a result of contrast, NCIDs, they will not be counted as CKD because these tend to sort of resolve of their own in four to six weeks time. So, markers of kidney damage, which could be one or more, simply albuminuria, anything more than 30 to maybe up to 300 milligram or gross proteinuria. Urine sediments are very, very important. Any electrolyte and other abnormalities which happen because of tubular disorders or if it is detected by histopathology or maybe by imaging, maybe an ultrasound or maybe some other sophisticated investigation and history of kidney transplantation in the past and if there is a reduction in EGFR less than 60. So I must tell you why we are taking 30, anything albuminuria more than 30 and EGFR le less than 60 and whether it is going to be a very, very significant cutoff when it comes to in clinical practice. So we know kidney function as measured by EGFR. These days we have a lot of apps and it, it is mandatory before right writing a prescription that you must find out what is the EGFR of that patient because based on that profile of the patient, you choose the drugs. Not only you choose the drugs because based on EGFR, you also calculate the doses also. So today we know EGFR and albuminuria, they independently predict increased risk for kidney events as well as CV death. So anything albuminuria increasing more than 30, going say more than 300 milligram or a gross proteinuria or EGFR falling less than 60 could independently predict not only CV death but also kidney events. So once your this is what is protein albuminuria up to 30, this is 30 to 300, this is red one is more than 300 milligram. And you could see that moment there is an increase in proteinuria. This pointer is not working on this LED screen. So, moment there is an increase in proteinuria, anything more than 30 going toward 300 or more, there is going to be not only a rapid deterioration in renal uh, falling EGFR and say renal disease may come early, there might be an acute kidney injury might be happening or even progressive CKD. And so is true about all cause mortality as well as cardiovascular mortality also goes up. Moment there is an increase in albuminuria and a deduction in EGFR more than uh, less than 60 ml. And KDGO guidelines as early as 2012, these were for the first time published and concluded that CKD is defined what I just said. Any abnormality of kidney structure or function which is present at least for three months with implication for health. And CKD is defined based on cause EGFR category also presence of albuminuria. So for the first time this matrix came by KDGO guidelines which is very very popular which actually elaborates that moment there is an increase in albuminuria from 30 to 300 milligram or more than 300 milligram or reduction in EGFR less than 60. You could see that till 60 no albuminuria prognosis is very very good it is absolutely green moment there is a reduction in EGFR less than 60 or albuminuria sets in more than 30 there is an immediate increase for the risk in progression of CKD and this is one of the systematic uh, analysis on global burden of disease study 2017 which said that 11.5 crore Indians they already have CKD and it is unfortunately already on rise so it's a very very alarming number another interesting CKD Indian CKD study on almost 4,000 patients concluded that based on EGFR and the prevalence of underlying causes of CKD in India are that diabetic kidney disease it is usually thought that someone who has diabetes will end up with diabetic kidney disease but it is not so Diabetic kidney disease 
accounting for end stage renal disease may be seen only in about 25 to 30 percent 25 percent could come from chronic interstitial nephritis and chronic glomerular nephritis which is very very common in indian patient could account for 15 percent even hypertension and other causes also could contribute towards ckd so it is not only diabetic nephropathy or diabetic ckd it may be diabetes with ckd which may be independently not a diabetic nephropathy another interesting study isn kddc study on 24000 patient said that majority of ckd patient don't have severely increased albuminuria this is a study where they have looked into that at the time of moderate to severe renal insufficiency whether you have accordingly higher albuminuria also because if you go by kdgo recommendation normally albuminuria will go with reduction in egfr but in southeast asian patient it has been seen that albuminuria may not be very very high in fact almost 60 percent 64 percent patient were still in the category a1 when they had already ckd only two-third patient they had advanced albuminuria maybe more than 300 milligram or up to 300 milligram i care study which is a cross-sectional study done on a done by bi itself again said that in india 58 percent of patient with type 2 diabetes they have some or other form at one level or other level of ckd in a outdoor setting well this was done across the country as a cross-sectional study on almost uh, good 5000 or 4000 patient and it was found that almost 58 percent patient had already presence of ckd so it is very very important to pick up ckd in clinical practice because many times early ckd may not get you any symptoms at all those patients may be totally asymptomatic so it is important not only to look for albuminuria whether it is less than 30 which will have a very favorable prognosis if it is more than 30 to 2 300 milligram so prognosis will go down and if it is already more than 300 milligram again there is going to be rapid deterioration in ckd similarly looking for egfr i told you in clinical practice is very very important and it should be done right at the time of diagnosis for the first time and repeated every one year but if there is already reduction in egfr less than 60 or albuminuria is positive widely it should be done two to three times a year to see the progression of the disease so especially not only in diabetes patient but those patients those who are at a high risk for developing ckd like old age dyslipidemia patient those who are tobacco user or those who have a strong family history of clustering of nephropathy they are the one they are at a, at a greater risk for ckd most people think that they are actually afraid that if they have today ckd or early diabetic nephropathy they are going to have ultimately end up with dialysis that is a real apprehension but it has been seen most of these patients unfortunately never reach that stage of dialysis because they tend to have much higher cardiovascular mortality and they die much earlier either as a result of volume overload or accelerated hypertension or maybe many times hyperkalemia and many more things so it is very very important that these patients should be followed on three to six month basis well this is a landscape of all trials which have happened in patient with ckd early days credence we know in diabetic nephropathy fidelio and figario ckd dkd trial with the uh, uh, phenanodon which is just published in 2021 but i'll be focusing on empa kidney trial which got published in 22 and another trial is also going on with semaglutide empa kidney study design it was a phase 3 randomized double blind placebo control trial which was actually done to see whether being on placebo versus a drug like ampagliflozulin 10 milligram will reduce the progression of renal composite endpoints as well as cv death in these patients so in this population at risk of ckd they were followed they were minded they were not all diabetic patient in fact 55 percent and 45 percent were the distribution there were patient those who neither had albuminuria they had eg for egfr reduced nor they were diabetic so it was a mixed population which were followed almost 6000 patient they were either on empagliflozulin 10 milligram daily with standard care or they were on placebo and they were followed for primary outcome which was cv death or kidney disease progression in this trial kidney disease progression was marked as if there is a reduction in egfr 
and it is as low as 10 ml or there is a sustained reduction of more than 40% egfr coming down and end stage renal disease or renal death or need for dialysis or transplant so it was uh, taken as a renal composite endpoints and secondary endpoints are again occurrence of hospitalization with heart failure or cv death all cause hospitalization or all cause mortality so key inclusion criteria was anyone who was more than 18 years evidence of ckd at risk of progression that means if their egfr was anything between 45 to 90 with albumin urea more than 200 mg per gram daily basis or if egfr was anything between 20 to 45 although their albumin urea was not there and these patient those who were already on appropriate doses of ace or arb which is a standard practice key exclusion criteria were those who were already on sglt2 inhibitor or combination of sglt1 and lgt2 inhibitor or a dual ras inhibitor they were excluded all type 1 with polycystic kidney disease patient were also excluded so empa kidney evaluated a broad patient population across different stages and causes of diabetic kidney ckd not diabetic kidney disease because either those patient had egfr between 20 to 45 with uh, no albuminuria or if egfr was anything between 45 to 90 with presence of albuminuria more than 200 mg percent and they were followed across and again i must tell you 46% patient only had type 2 diabetes because 54% patients almost 50% patient you may say they were without diabetes but they had dkd and 73 patient percent patient they were without any prior history of cv disease and the reported kidney biopsy confirmed patient were seen in almost 28% out of the total trial again 31% patient had diabetic kidney disease and 25% patient had glomerular disease which excluded diabetic kidney disease they had type 2 diabetes but they didn't have diabetic nephropathy and they had another cause of ckd which was glomerular disease which could be an igu nephropathy or focal sclerosing type of uh, disease or they had hypertensive renovascular disease so major studies with sglt2 if you talk about all the data or all evidence which is available on dkd as per the dkd uh, category they are all different that is why idly we shouldn't compare these trial because these are two heterogeneous population empa kidney i told you they either had albuminuria more than 200 with egfr between 45 to 90 or egfr was between 20 to 45 no albuminuria credence were all patient with diabetes kidney disease with egfr more than 30 and dapa ckd with egfr between 25 to 75 but albuminuria between uh, 200 to 500 their albuminuria was much more so their results as such cannot be compared so in empa kidney let's talk about that a uh, this drug as compared to the placebo establish that there is going to be a reduction in 3 point mace and renal composite endpoints or cv death by almost 28% and p value wise it was very very significant because number needed to treat these results were only 28 which is a very small number so empagliflozin reduce kidney disease progression or cv death significantly in patient with ckd in terms of end stage kidney disease you could see that there was a reduction by 33% end stage kidney disease or death from cv cause went down by 27% end stage kidney disease or death from any other cause went down by 20% not only that those patient those who had diabetes with ckd i have shown you the previous slide that was dkd the, that was ckd not everyone was diabetic but those who had diabetes with ckd again kidney disease progression was reduced by 45% kidney disease progression in diabetic nephropathy proven was reduced by 44% and kidney failure in diabetes with ckd was again reduced by 41% all these values were p value wise very very significant so empa reduces kidney disease progression by 32% in various glomerular diseases it is not only diabetic kidney disease anyone who has diabetes with ckd without getting diabetic nephropathy even other causes of diabetic nephropathy 
I have shown you IG nephropathy and other. There also it was seen that there was a reduction in overall renal composite endpoint by more than 35%. Not only that, the chronic slope, we know type 2 diabetes patient with DKD, they tend to gradually lose EGFR. Almost there is a reduction by 5% over the year. So this also will get flattened if you are on a drug like empagliflozin. So that chronic slope you could see, it favors usage of empagliflozin irrespective of whether you have diabetes, what is your EGFR, what is your albumin creatinine ratio, all participants across you could see versus placebo, they had a better outcome once they were on 10 milligram of empagliflozin. So EMPA reduces the risk of all cause hospitalization, not only diabetic kidney disease, renal composite endpoint, CV death, all cause hospitalization was also down, down by 14% and p-value wise it was very very significant. In terms of safety outcome, there is always a concern once you are on SGLT2, there could be episodes of hyperkalemia or acute kidney injury but you could see versus placebo actually those patients, those was those who were on 10 milligram, they behaved much better in terms of these side effects also. So to conclude, EMPA kidney was stopped early, much prematurely because events happened and results were so overwhelming that even the placebo group should not be denied the benefit of being on EMPA glyphosate so that trial was stopped prematurely. EMPA reduced the risk of kidney progression or CV death in a broad range of patients with CKD, you could see that it was a two heterogeneous group, almost 46 were only diabetic, 54% were non-diabetic. Effect was seen irrespective of underlying cause, whether it was a IgA nephropathy, it was a hypertensive nephropathy, it was a diabetic kidney disease or alone CKD. Across the spectrum, you have seen the benefits were there and EMPA slowed the decline in kidney function, that chronic slope was much better versus placebo group and not only that there was a 14 percent reduction in all cause hospitalization also so today 2022 kdgo talks about that in all patient of course the role of diet and exercise is absolutely important so lifestyle modification has to go but for reduction in egfr Ideally, these patients should be on metformin or SGLT2 inhibitor and metformin can be continued till EGFR is less than 30 or patient is requiring hemodialysis. Similarly, now the cutoff for SGLT2 inhibitor has come down to last slide, come down to less than 20 but for want of good glycemic control and for getting extra benefits, you may choose drugs like GLP-1 receptor agonist, insulin, sulfonylurea or other drugs. Thank you very much for your patience listening.